Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the energy contained within a circuit when there's mutual coupling. Now we already in the past saw what the energy content is of an inductor. We have current flowing through it. And here we have the equation. The energy stored in an inductor is equal to one half the inductance times I squared, the current squared. But what do we do when there's mutual coupling? So here we have a simple example of mutual coupling between two inductors L1 and L2. Notice the mutual inductance is M, and notice that the current enters on both inductors on the dot side of the inductor. Now, let's first look at coil 1 and see what the energy content is in coil 1 only due to the current I1. So we know that the power is always equal to the product of the voltage and the current, and we know that the voltage across an inductor can be explained as the inductance times di dt. And so what we now have is, to find the work, we simply integrate the power over time, and notice that if we take the dt and bring it over here, then p1 dt will be equal to l1 dii, or li1 di. And we're going to integrate that from the current being zero to the current being the maximum value of I1. Since L is a constant, we only have to integrate I di, so that becomes I squared over two. We plug in from zero to I1, plug in the lower limit, you get zero, plug in the upper limit, you get I1 squared. So again, we see that the energy contained within an inductor is one half L times I squared. But now, how do we deal with the mutual inductance? So now we want to find the energy stored in L2. Now we have to include the energy L2 has because of current I2 and also because the mutual inductance between the two, which means that it is affected by I1. So the power for L2 is going to be again V2 I2, just like before, V1 I1 for P power 1, but also due to the mutual inductance, I times the voltage induced by the mutual coupling, and that's going to be M, the mutual coupling, times di dt. And notice that what we're going to do here to simplify things, we're going to let I1 equals I, which is a constant, so we're no longer going to let I1 vary, we already accounted for that in this, uh, in this inductor, so now we take the coupling here, when we let I2 vary, and we have the mutual inductance M here. I1 is simply going to be a constant. And so notice we can then change VI, we can now write that as L2 di dt, that would be the voltage across inductor 2 times the current through inductor 2, and then the mutual voltage will be caused by the mutual, uh, by the mutual coupling times di dt times the current I1. So now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate that as well. Notice that to find W2, we're going to integrate power 2 times dt, and of course power 2 is going to be the sum of these two. And then we cross multiply the dt over here, so power 2 times dt will give us this right here. And since we're going to integrate power 2 dt, we get the integral of those two terms, which is L2 I2 di2 and M di2 times I1. So that, those are those two, two terms right here. So in the first one, it's the same thing again. L2 is a constant. I2 integrated becomes I2 squared over 2, and we integrate from 0 to the maximum value of I2. Over here, notice that I1 is a constant because we kept it constant at I1. M is a constant, and now we simply integrate di, which becomes I from 0 to I2. And if we then plug in the lower limits, we get 0. Plug in the upper limits, we get on, the, on here for this portion, we get 1 half L2 I2 squared, which is the same format as what we got over here for inductor 1. So we get the same value for both, of course, on this one, we get the same format, I should say, because here, of course, it depends on the value of L2 and on the value of I2. But then we have this term right here. So we have the mutual inductance times the product of the two currents. So if we want to find the total energy contained Within, within the two inductors, we have the energy of the first inductor plus the energy of the second inductor plus the energy of the mutual coupling. Notice we have a plus here because we have the two currents entering on the same side, on the dot side of the two inductors. 
what's going to happen when they enter the opposite side, then this action becomes a negative and it actually takes energy out of the system instead of adding energy to the system. Or in order to get to the maximum current for both inductors, when there's mutual coupling like this, you'll have to have additional energy to get or additional power energy, power over time, which is energy, to get the inductors up to the maximum current flow, or at least get the current flow through the inductors to the maximum value. That's what I was trying to say. So that's what this term means right here. When you end the two currents, enter on the same side, either on the opposite side of the dot or on the same side of the dot in both cases, you add this. If it's in the opposite direction for the two currents, then you're going to subtract that term. And that is how it's done.